Come on, Dube. Yo, Kanjan. Mushe Kanjan. Did you point? Koga di Mbawako. Mungu koga naga baba. Koga di going. Ah, Mungu watu chumuka chinda mberi. Eh, wase ya mai Ah, you know what? She mm. wakes up today, but she says, "Come and go and have a change." You know, it's uh, mm. ninety-nine years getting to hundred. You know, you uh, uh, anything goes. You know. I understand. I understand. Yeah. So, and that come on up a weekend, but uh, yeah, she has got serious arthritis. Ma, 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 ma knees. So, I buy one more jacks, and the pain is reduced. What come on, sir? No, she's with us here. She, I know, girl. No, no, for no, go. You, go, go. Director, we campus director of University Kwedu. Oh, oh, that one. Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, what are you going to do? Are you going to do something? No, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to do something. Who are you? I want to open your chicken gate. Ah, this is to to cut the zebra. No, this chicken gate. You know, cut the ramen. This is what I'm going to do. Yes, this is. Je uraiti mungo ujia tuwa gachi kwa baba. Chero uruku urarama. Uraiti ujia kutuwa gachi kwa baba. Ende unotu. Zauto rizu. Zauto rizu. Zauto rizu. Zauto rizu. Yeah, that's true. Ani seko msukuru. Msukuru wangewe. I last, I last, I was in contact last week. Uh, I think he was now going back to 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 Wangi. So I haven't been because the Nigerian was busy. Ne, so I'm going to pull off a move. So I'm going to buy a mayana. Acha pinda manch manch. Acha ti join. Acha ti join. Ah, no, ti join. Imbo Morisa Prof. Magadi. Prof. Willy. Very much. Eh, tu kau nak beri mo? Karena untuk cepik saya cakap garaji ribu, but one for nanggil beri mo. For now there there are there about five people. That is Io, Dambuka, Nanonzi Chiku, Chiku Ndian. That is Imin. Then Imimi and Neni. Do five for nanggil beri kodu aku. Ah, ini proof anda aku awak neng. Pamsora pamur kau nama picture di pamsora bu. Oh, don't go now. I'm going to change. Can I? Alright. And I have a package of participants. The party will have a participants. We will not go to those who are going to be present. Oh, I have a package of tower six manager. Eh, eh, eh. The power now. We are pin. I pin that this under Sarah. Eh, no problem. No one will come. Oh, okay. But click. I have a package of goods. Everyone will come. Eh, as far as muted, come, prof. Eh, very muted. Yeah, I think that's why it was three. Was three points. And the long way say when she's talking about it, we have to talk. Long way so are muted. Ah, I'm so glad for a pinda. Eh, I say I do go to Abu Nikui. The one I can see you talk about in the video, I do go Buddha. I think I'm going to be angry. Amen. Eh, chairman, chairman, the Bugunz why? No, I don't know what is happening now. Coach, because I Gaji ni umir. Eh, naik. Waktu cinta. Dulu saya aku di aku di cikgu itu di rumah bapa saya. Pamarusan sa, pamarusan sa komputer yang mohon. Ayuh. This guy, I, I dulu saya dah naik, bandu dulu saya aku di ko apa apa, aku dah saya akan di cikgu. Ini dah jadi tuan kat konsol cikgu yang na zita tak faham nana naru. So anda ni dah saya aku di apa apa sesuai dengan susun nai. Mukomamaros. Orang tu di komputer aku ikut si Chico. Ibu, anda mana bapa bapa muka anda pernah meninggal apa? Muka anda pernah pernah si bapa mampu dispense. Eh, ibu muda kan si Chico 
and yet, and this is the end up. End up, my participants up as a the rain name on your as the road. End up, my participants on a click. Panapans more abandoned a hair, rename a hair. All right, good. Ah, because Ludo's room of Amber say, Papa. Sakongos was easy. Kondo was I was born before computers, the advocate. Ah, <laughs> 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 Kuriseko <laughs> 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 Thanks for the feedback, Mgoma. Hey, I want to pay this, sir. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. It's 28 minutes past 11. Mascat. Ksen. Ah. It's not what I don't go to Razari, my son. Drupal, I could see my battery. I got up zero, Mr. Dambuka, the end of the day. I want to look quite too full. Maros, I could say, Boswana, put in any baba, Kogadi Kogo. Ask that. I was a chick of what is it? I don't know. <laughs> Last time in Andaga, the HP. I don't know, Madam. I didn't know it. It's under Tonde, I said, I will not turn the I will not ask a question. Why, I'm going to start a crumble chinja with the one I cheap say. I was done, and I would change the chinja. I don't know about computer. I was done for a party for it. Ah, to rock is out chicha kaitika. So this guy I know the Chiku called Dosh and I. Eh. We share the same office. Eh. So I didn't have meetings at no boy taga. Jumbo Shandisa link in the chat. I'm sure something has happened. Well, what a risky report. That I wanna. You're good to share, which I take information like yours. And then goes on a man. So, Prof. 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 is still muted in the photograph. No, I'm here. I'm here. Let me just. How are you? I am doing fine, Prof. Let me just Good. sort myself out here. <coughs> okay, let me do this. Okay, good evening to everyone. Good evening, Prof. And, uh, What's up, Dabo? 
Good evening, Prof. How are you? I'm, I'm a bit tired. Uh, we are busy selecting postgraduate students, so the process has been very, very long. A meeting that started at 12 o'clock, and we've only just finished now. But uh, it's all in a day's work. Okay. Yeah. Prof, it has to be done. It has we to be done. Only, we can only sympathize with you, but uh, the task on hand for us is continuing, isn't it? That's it. That's it. It must continue. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> let me take this time to welcome everyone to the third week uh, before you guys go and start doing some things on your own and. Um, Crafting up your your research, I, I, I've even said to you, please don't don't uh, wait too late. You can even be doing as you take notes now. Um, you know, uh, you know the side of uh, what you want to cover and, uh, in terms of your, your research. And um, sorry, you're breaking. You're breaking. Am I breaking? Because yes. Oh, okay. I I don't know what the problem is, but. How is it now? Better now. It's, it's better, better now. Better. Okay, okay. Maybe I need to speak directly into the to, to the laptop. Yeah. So, so, so that's the issue that we must. Uh, we can also make notes as we go on, as to what we want to achieve and what we want to cover, and the, that that's also part of the learning process. So, so please, please, don't feel um, uh, don't don't wait till the penultimate week. Uh, like last week, we gave an example of the topics and uh, we framed a few topics here and there. And then I'm glad that uh, the process was very helpful to, to, to some of you. And um, it will continue to be helpful for as long as we just uh, work towards that. So tonight, we, we cover an important component of the um, research process, which is the idea of the literature review. Uh, the literature review provides us a platform through which we can also identify what is it that our research seeks to cover? What is it that from the wide terrain of um, information and work that we've got, what is it that our research seeks to cover? And in what way and in what platform uh, are these topics and themes relevant to two critical issues. The first is the wider body of literature, what others have done or are doing. And importantly, to the second critical aspect, which is uh, to the work that you are positioning. And all of the work that we are positioning must be located in some form of an area of study or a body of knowledge. And that helps us to be able to, to pinpoint where the focus should be. So that's the importance of the literature review to really guide you in identifying a plausible gap that you can work with in your research, to guide you in also justifying the, the, the area that your topic is going to seek to cover. And once you do that, it really provides you an opportunity to, to then stand out and, uh, and, and, and with, with confidence to be able to say, this is what uh, this research is doing, and this is what this research is covering. And so when we look at the literature review, there are steps to take when we are um, uh, working with a literature review. One of the steps that I'm going to talk to you about is a literature search process. Where do we get information? Um, do we get information from sources like Wikipedia? Do we get information from um, online sources? Do we get information from um, uh, platforms like ResearchGate? You can name different, different platforms which we're going to expose you to. And what I would like as a takeaway from this experience is uh, after the, uh, the, the presentation tonight, go and find out uh, and, uh, and set up these platforms. Some of you are on platforms like Facebook, Instagram, there are also platforms you can join, such as ResearchGate, which is really, I don't know what to call it, the social media uh, platform of researchers, but it's really, really a useful, useful outlet 
for you to um, network with other scholars, as I will show you a little bit later on. So we, 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 we are as effective in writing literature reviews as the uh, sources that we consult this information from. And that becomes critical and that becomes very important and that becomes very necessary. We must also evaluate sources. Not all sources deserve to be given the light of day. Some sources will have to first understand um, the, the, I mean, we're talking about the era of predatory publishing. So we may need to safeguard ourselves from sources that may be dubious or um, um, not warranted for. And that's a process of, um, uh, uh, of, of, of sifting out. Somebody said to me, it's like eating a, a watermelon. Where in the watermelon, there's the nice fleshy part and there's also the, the seeds. In most cases, we don't eat the seeds, we spit out the seeds. And when we spit out the seeds, it gives us a platform to be able to uh, select what information is relevant and what we can work with in terms of the, the work that we're doing. And I'm gonna show you some of that stuff. And then finally, we write the review. I did warn you that one of the things we need to be careful of is the excitement with um, having information. Sometimes we can download thousands and thousands of files as I've given you some already, and I've already started downloading some files according to the themes that you've provided me. But, but really the, 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 the point we should um, uh, get to uh, work with is that uh, we must also uh, not just give in to this idea of the information barrage to, to, to say we've got so much information to work with and have but also, you know, be at a, a mature level of saying, this is what we need, this is what we don't need. And, and that's where the, the art of reading an abstract comes in. In just reading the abstract alone of an article, you are able to know whether this article will be handy or not. And that becomes a, a, an important pointer. So a literature review really provides us a, a platform through which we can engage with the literature. It provides us a platform of what, uh, an understanding of really what our peers in the form of scholars have come up with and are, are working with. But importantly, a literature review uh, provides us a platform of knowing other important things about the topic that we are researching. These may include Issues related to um, um, uh, background information, definitions, um, a synthesis of the literature. Uh, it may also include summaries, useful summaries that help us to, to build the, the literature sources that we are, we are working with. So the, the, the premise and the basic idea that we should be pushing towards is um, uh, realizing that there is no such thing as uh, bad uh, literature. What we need to do is just get into the habit of realizing that uh, we are sifting through what we need and what we may not necessarily need. It doesn't make it bad, but it just means for the confines of the study that you're working with, that information may not be relevant. The two key issues in a literature review is summarizing uh, not just summarizing for the sake of summarizing, but summarizing for the sake of positioning yourself and your argument of what you are currently working on. And if we lose track of the importance of the argument of what we are working on, we then deviate um, um, uh, to, to understanding um, really what are the premise or the, the big issues that are needed in this particular topic that we may be uh, uh, researching. And that becomes critical also in um, um, what we need to cover and what we need to be, to be, to be working at. Um, the, the, the other issue that we may need to focus upon is the issue of um, the synthesis. Um, the synthesis becomes um, necessary um, because it, it, it also is, it follows through the work of summaries um, because the synthesis is really then how you make sense of the information um, you are working with. 
and it, 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 it's part of this idea of critique. It's part of this idea of um, uh, voice. This is the new word people like to talk about that your, your, your literature review should somewhat move from a summary to end up giving you a voice. And the, the, the biggest voice or the loudest voice that you can ever generate in the literature review is the voice of what your research is all about. Some scholars have even argued that the synthesis is part of the critical work that we all must do. And the critical work that we all must do is not necessarily just accepting what others have done. Uh, another person told me that we're not just wanting you, you to be reflectors of other people's thinking, um, but we want you to be people who give voice and opinion to what you seek to contribute to what others may have done or may have said within this uh, literature that you are uh, seeking to position your work in. And that becomes important and that becomes necessary, especially uh, at, at the doctorate level, where we are not asking you to just summarize, which can be a tactic that uh, students use at the undergraduate level. We are asking you to make or show us that you can make sense of this information that is presented to you. And the part of making sense of this information is the part that we have uh, called, as of this point, the, the synthesis, because it is uh, involving you as a scholar and how you make sense of the realities in the uh, work that you are citing as, uh, as, as work of authority. So we need a literature review to provide us a report of what has been researched about a particular field. It shows us uh, where that field is going. It shows us where that field is coming from. And it can also show us uh, gaps that may exist. Uh, what you can do in another class uh, workshop I did uh, online a few weeks ago, you can identify a range of topics and areas that people are working on and then say to different people, listen, come with your thoughts and uh, ideas uh, uh, around this particular area. And then you start giving each of those range of thoughts and voices, uh, different opinions of saying, what do you think about this subject matter? And we therefore then find out what has been done or researched, what has not been researched and what should be the next agenda in the field that we are researching that drives this particular topic. So literature reviews are often a small section of research papers, scholarly articles and books put together around that particular area that you're studying. Some have called them literature reviews are little funnels, if you like, of a particular area that we uh, 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 are working on and we stick to be uh, heightening uh, our understanding to, towards. Questions we can ask in literature reviews is there, uh, and, and this is the number, the, the question that students like to ask me sometimes, how many sources should I cite as part of the literature review? And so the question here is a question of the numbers game. And, uh, and often we, we may go, get trapped into the numbers game. Yeah, uh, we may have either too, many, too much, or we, you can either have too little. Um, you can never have, as someone said, you can never have too much money, but you can, ha you can always have too little money. So the, the idea of a literature review should really uh, try and strike a balance. And, and the, 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 the argument here is not an argument of quantity, but an argument of quality. And I'll show you a little bit later on how we can uh, safeguard that. Who is the audience that you're writing for? In this case, you're writing to a scholarly community about a topic that is part of a program, which is the DDL. What type of sources should I use? Often we get caught up here. Sometimes people like to cite uh, newspapers and read proposals uh, where students cite a lot of newspaper work uh, as guiding the, 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 the reviews that they are doing. Some people like to cite blogs, uh, websites. So we, we must establish some form of um, uh, precedent towards the type of sources that we are citing. Should you evaluate your sources and how? We can evaluate sources by 
by the recency factor. You will hear me a lot in, in, when I review students' work. I, I always argue, please be recent. Uh, and and it, it, it's a simple argument, really. Uh, uh, we cannot uh, survive or make uh, hard not decisions by relying on literature which may somewhat be interpreted as having uh, been too old or outdated. So we need we need a premise where we can say there is necessity for recent material. I mean, if you're going to be quoting um, statistics around unemployment, uh, the, the, the GDP, uh, issues like policy changes, you must be embedded in recent arguments as, as to what is happening. You, you cannot come in, in modern day Zimbabwe and frame the economic outlook to be guided by policies of ESAP or, or, or policies that we may have moved towards. Or if you are going to be working with um, uh, uh, policies at a wider international scale, quoting the the Millennium Development Goals, when we are now at the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, that progression of time in the materials and the literature that we are supposed to present must come out clearly in the work that we are doing. Do we need to include things like the background information, definitions? I think these are characteristic information that happen. We are writing a paper with some colleagues um, from different institutions, uh, University of Pretoria, uh, Nelson Mandela University, Forte, and um, the Gordon Institute of Business Science. And um, in this article that we were editing today, as part of this collaborative project, we, we noted the necessity to include definitions. However, when we include the definitions, we must also re re uh, um, uh, present the notion that some definitions uh, change over time. They may be describing a phenomena, but they change over time. And that change over time must be noted in the definitions that we're working on. So background information like definitions needs to, to come out. Do your sources need to be from one particular time period? I always say locate your sources on a on a on a trajectory on a of of, of different time uh, di dimensions and domains so that there's variation also in terms of what you're talking about. So if you're going to be talking about decent work, uh, uh, you must also locate how the definition of decent work has evolved over time. The research around the concept of decent work has evolved up until the current framing of the ILO that we have today. And that's part of the flair and the artistry that you have as a, as a researcher to be able to show your reader that you can show this variation. If you're watching a football match at the National Sports Stadium, uh, Highlanders versus Dynamos for some argument or, or any other team, uh, uh, part and parcel of the distinguishing factor between the, the two teams has to be the, the variation of flair that exists between players in the team. And that's what writing is all about. Writing is about showing your reader that you can you can alternate in terms of these variations and, and incorporate different styles that make who you are. And, 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 and part and parcel of this is understanding when writing starts to become a, a, a drag and a boredom for you, it then it is difficult to, to then appreciate the, 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 the importance of such communication that you can achieve towards your audience as part of writing. So, we present to you three steps in conducting a literature review, finding the sources, which we will show you practically how to do some of that work, evaluating the sources, which is the work of actually determining whether some of the sources that you're working with are, are worth it uh, to be considered as sources for your work, and writing the review. Subsequently, that's the most important part. Some people also prefer to write the review in terms of uh, summaries and tables, and, and it's very much accepted to first conceptualize the ideas on paper, and then you translate them to the um, to the to the uh, to the laptop and uh, the, the the electronic world. Also, very much accepted. How do we find sources? Well, the the era of the internet has made it very easy for us to find sources. I got an email today from. Um, a magazine uh, called The Conversation, where they are asking me to say, please, could you assist us by writing an article uh, for their African audience on how connectivity 
can be improved within the uh, African higher education landscape? What ought we to be doing to improve connectivity in the African higher education landscape? And, and one of the things I note with interest is um, uh, there, there have been great strides that have happened. I will give you an example. There is a platform called Eduram. Eduram it really provides us um, a way of making sure that we can um, easily connect uh, to through inter to internet sources or internet uh, to the internet there at various platforms and locations. So I may be at another campus on the African continent, which also uses Eduram. I don't need to log in with that um, platform's uh, internet. I will just basically automatically logged in because of the connectivity that comes with the benefit of being part of platforms like Eduram. So we've got so many, we've got so much information. Uh, somebody even said to me that the challenge of our time period uh, that we live in is that we have so many, uh, so much information, uh, yet uh, we are not the wiser. Uh, we can consult so many aspects and platforms. I can read the Herald right now by just uh, typing it on my uh, internet uh, platform and then I, I'm reading the same news that you are reading uh, in the location that you are. So what we need to realize when we search for information is there is the most basic information that we have at a surface level and we can go deeper and actually start looking at more critical information. And for this, we could do a whole class on what is uh, the ethos and the science behind um, academic publishing and how it works. But I think the most important thing we need to understand uh, and, and work with here is the importance of knowing that you and I are engaged in a work of making sure that there is credibility in the information that we search leading to um, uh, the sources that we search for. So we must find sources. I want to <clears throat> deviate slightly now and uh, try and practically illustrate uh, some ways we can find sources. And um, this, this will come in handy uh, for the exercise that we're about to do uh, and, um, and, and share with you. So, uh, I want to share with you some of the most basic ways where sources exist. Uh, I'm not sure about some of you who are here. If you are on um, uh, Facebook, uh, I think a predominant number of people are on Facebook. But there's also a platform that I want to introduce to you called ResearchGate. And um, it's going to come up on your screen right now. This is what it looks like. It's called researchgate.net, researchgate.net. Now what ResearchGate allows us to be able to do, as you can see, it, it looks like a social media platform. Uh, people say that nowadays, if you want to find information about people, um, you know, just check their social media platforms that they are there. In fact, sometimes social media can be very, very unforgiving to uh, uh, people. So there's a level of responsibility that comes with this. But what I'm going to show you right now is called ResearchGate. And ResearchGate is really a platform uh, which serves like a, like a social media platform, but um, it's for researchers. Uh, let's start by showing you uh, what it looks like from a distance. So what you do is you create your platform, like I've done, I've created the platform. Um, and what the number that you see here, this number here, the 20.55, is what's called the ResearchGate Index or the RG Index. Uh, the thinking is that everyone who is a researcher or an active researcher uh, will have that index based on the impact of their work amongst uh, fellow colleagues in the, in the industry. So the RG index is really, really a, a platform of making sure that we we capture your activity in the in the in the in the in the field. So when you publish an article, when your article gets cited, you know you're in a platform where uh, this this index is improving. As a as a DBL student, I would also urge that don't be too worried about your RG index. I think what you must understand is that your 
your current work is setting you up to be a scholar or to achieve scholar status. What you then do with the research gate, you put a picture, you add a little bit of information about yourself, what are your skills and your expertise. It tells you uh, the total interest in the research, research that you're doing, the number of times people have cited your work, the number of times people have recommended your work, and the number of reads that you've had since you've, uh, in other words, people downloading the research that you do. So when you publish an article, your research gets uh, featured onto your profile and people get to see the work that you do. So some of the things you can notice is um, uh, this would be my inbox. So people can write to you. Please send me, um, oh, this is a, a request. In fact, uh, I'm showing you now my, my, my stuff. But anyway, um, this is a student who wrote to me saying that they are working on a master's thesis. Uh, on socialization of the media, they would like me to send some of the work that I do. Sometimes you can also get uh, people who request your articles, like this is the latest book chapter we wrote, somebody has written to me, uh, Moa Lucy, who is saying, please, can I also have a, a manual copy of this article? And uh, different people write to you to say, because sometimes some people cannot access uh, 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 that information. And then, uh, what I think are some of the strong sides of ResearchGate, we can illustrate them here. The first one, uh, I don't know if anybody has got a topic that they are researching that they would like me to search and then show you how they, um, uh, how we can come about to information. You may need to unmute because because of the um, screens that I've got here, I may not be able to read the, the comment box. So please just unmute and say any topic that you're working on. Employee regenerative capacity. Okay, so we can use that as a employee regenerative capacity. Right. So when we search uh, for that, uh, what 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 it then does? It offers us different platforms. The first platforms is to look for people who are researching in that area. The second one is to look for projects that are being done in that area. The third one is to look for publications in that area. And the fourth one are questions. Now, we're going to look at each and every one of them. For the researchers, uh, it shows us who are the different people who are working on that area. And now it says request full text. That means that the text is not available. So what you can actually do when you click research full text, uh, it sends it to a message to the researcher to say somebody is interested in a full text that you've written. Um, the projects are the different areas that people um, are, are looking at. We could even use the word regenerative capacity because if you notice here, it's confusing it with uh, biological terms. So sometimes uh, there's necessity to be clear about what we are working on. So if we say employee capacity, maybe, and it shows you all the, the literature that's there. But one of the features I love is the questions feature. Uh, you can ask questions. I, I, let me show you by, oh, okay, okay. So let's do publications. So you, you can, people, so it, 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 it's beneficial for scholars to put their work on this platform because if people interact with their work and they can publish and then that's good. So you can just click, let's say if I wanted to read this article, click download. And once I click download, it downloads the article and then I am able to, then to follow the article. It will tell us where we got the article, which is research gate, but I'm able to also download an art article related to that particular area, uh, free of charge for as long as you are a member of, um, of ResearchGate. But there are also other benefits that uh, ResearchGate offers. One of the benefits is the benefit of asking a question. Now, I want to show you how this works. So what I can, can do is, um, OK, so I can ask the question right here. Uh, and then let's see what uh, maybe sometime this week uh, uh, somebody can um, Let's see what, what will happen maybe by the end of the week. So I'm going to ask a, a technical question, okay? And then my question would be, any useful leads on 
articles about employee regenerative capacity. And so that's the question I've asked. And then I'll put the, well, you can put, uh, okay, it needs a question mark. The algorithm will not capture it unless there's a question mark. Um, I'm doing research on employee regenerative capacity and would appreciate any literature suggestions on the topic. Okay. And so that is the comment that accompanies the question. Um, and then what we then do is we then go here. Okay, let me just uh, increase. Yeah, then we say add. Oh, I'm looking for a, oh, I'm, uh, okay. Okay, and then we say add. And then what will happen now is that it will show me here that I've put a question. And um, anybody who sees the question will be able to answer the question and then provide an answer if they can to say, look, um, this is what I would suggest. So let me show you another question I may have asked in another at another time period. Uh, so you can also follow questions that others have asked. Uh, you, you see on social media where people just uh, write their names under a post posted by a famous person and say, no, I'm just here for the comments. Uh, that, that's an example of, of, of one such uh, area. So I'll, I'll show you um, a question I asked which has received the most um, um, responses. Uh, let's pick up... Um, okay, let's pick up this one. This was almost in 2016. Uh, I asked the question, I'm working on a project seeking to measure the relationship between leadership behaviors, group identity, and intention to attend work. So I, I asked the question, I put some uh, hashtags there of what the areas I want covered in the question, leadership, scale development, and then uh, some responses started coming and I'll read to you some of the responses. Have a look at my attempts to measure leadership and in terms of innovation capabilities and performance, and they put their articles, they, it obviously pays because they are asking us to engage with their work. For my leadership training, I use the authentic questionnaire, the ALQQ, and so all these people were responding to that question. So that's one benefit that uh, ResearchGate has in not only getting your work out there if you've written documents of any nature, but it also helps in terms of you searching uh, for, for articles. Remember, this section is the section on the importance of um, uh literature sources that help you to be able to identify um credibility obviously that's one but also the idea of uh making sure that the literature sources provide a platform through which we can get information without uh, necessarily having to pay for it and all the other things the second source i would like to recommend is this beautiful beautiful platform called the etd platform uh, the ETD is the electronic thesis or dissertation. That's what ETD means. Most universities have got this ETD platform there. And uh, the South African side, we have put this through the work of the National Research Foundation. Basically, the idea here is to make sure that every dissertation published in the South African context, in a South African public university, gets put online. And you can even see some of the statistics that accompany this by the dissertations put according to the different institutions that we've got. Um, and so um, maybe another person can tell me any topic that they would like us to search for, and I'll show you how this works. Anybody with any topic that they would like us to search for for uh, the ETD platform? Uh, leadership in public health. Okay, uh, public health. I heard something about public health. Ethical leadership in public health. 
Okay, so what we can do here, we can use the word, you can search individually, like ethical leadership, that would be one, and then you say go. And so what it does then, it searches, remember that's why we use keywords when we are searching for um, uh, articles, when we're writing articles, keywords actually help us to be able to identify what we are looking for. So in this case, ethical leadership, is covered. There are these articles about ethical leadership. So let's say I wanted to read this one, exploring ethical leadership uh, in the gold mining industry, um, which I know some people are looking at mining. So it tells me, this is the thesis, this is the name of the person who wrote it, and it was a mini dissertation. Here is the abstract. And if you read the abstract and you are happy with it, there is this uh, identifier, which is here. If you click the identifier, it then automatically takes you to a website where the thesis is housed. In this case, this thesis is part of the Gordon Institute of Business Science, which is part of the University of Pretoria. And then there's a document right here. If you click view open, it then takes you to the actual thesis that you're looking for uh, from page one to page 139. So that's one way of searching for, 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 for articles. If you really want a combination search, which is what um, uh, somebody was talking about. So if you say ethical leadership plus public health, you're now telling the algorithm that you would like it to search for articles where the word ethical leadership and any form of public health literature comes out. And then it then does that. But if you notice, it's still going to search uh, um, different things. Here, the word public is public service. If you want to capture the algorithm to be specific, you can then say ethical leadership. But where you say public health, put full quotations there. And the full quotation simply means that you want the word public and health to be together and variants of the word ethical leadership. And you'll actually notice that the, the criteria becomes narrower uh, because it starts looking at um, where uh, public health is and where ethics uh, come about. And let's say if you want this first article, you click on it, go right at the bottom, click the handle. And once you click the handle, it then takes you to the website of the institution. And uh, on the website of the institution, uh, this is interestingly an article done by a Zimbabwean, by Zimbabwean women. Uh, and then you then say, okay, you want the PDF, you click the PDF and you have the entire thesis. Uh, well, it's not, it's not done by a Zimbabwean woman, it's it, it, by a Zimbabwean, it's done using um, Zimbabwean women. So I, 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 I correct myself, the author does not necessarily have to be uh, Zimbabwean. Uh, Zimbabwean. And so the, the whole article is there, the whole thesis story is there. So that's the other useful platform. And how do you get there? Well, it's netd.ac.za. And that's a useful platform in also getting um, articles and, 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 and uh, particularly dissertations. Okay, so let's go back to the slides and I'll, I'm sure I'll share some of the other information in the um, in the slides as we go on. So the first step of the process, as we have said, it's about finding information, making sure that our information is some form of credibility, making sure that our information is, is very much uh, readily understood in terms of its way it is. And, 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 and like I said to you, the issue for me here is the, um, the making of the researcher in being able to collectively gather information. The second part of the process is evaluating the source of information. Uh, we can evaluate by the rationale, the authority figure. Sometimes our work can be based around uh, individuals. Sometimes our work can be based around um, uh, authority figures. So it pays to know who the authority figures may be and how they can um, uh, form an, a useful part 
in assisting us in terms of the work that we're doing. Sometimes the dates, uh, how recent the information is, the accuracy, the relevance, also form key parts in, 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 in that process. So you must be able to sift out the information to actually know which is information that you can work with and which one is information that you, you don't necessarily need. Remember also that uh, the next part is then we write it. You can either write it in terms of the manual writing where you uh, manually write it in a, um, those counter book or the writing pads, or you can also write it as you go on on your on your computer. But it really differs with one person to person. It, it's really the idea of trying to organize and synthesize information, not only in a coherent manner, but making sure that the information uh, is uh, understood by you, of course and also it's supporting and uh, uh, launching useful key arguments that form part of your uh, your writing expedition in terms of um, what you're going to be working with. I put there, uh, 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 and I, adapting these sources, these, these slides, uh, the use of direct quotes should be used sparingly. And this is part of the flair that I was talking to you about that as, as writers and researchers, we must make sure that we don't get caught up in this idea of just um, um, uh, making sure that we don't get caught up in the idea of making that we are not well versed with information, uh, uh, but also using different ways of writing uh, and making sure that it's it's used in a sparing manner that also does not uh, become monotonous. Uh, in terms of the work that you're trying to do um, in, uh, as part of your writing project. And we can talk about that as we go on in, uh, and also as your submissions come in. So write the review, divide the literature into categories, into trends, into logical arguments that you're making. And really the, the creativity here is on your part as a scholar to be able to, 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 to do this. But you must then tie the literature into a, into a way that allows your thesis and to be understood, uh, also uh, allowing the reader to be able to also uh, pinpoint and to be able to see where the gaps in the literature are heading towards. Be sure to also look at examples of literature reviews and then I'm gonna switch off here and show you an example of what I mean here. Anybody who can um, give me another topic that they are interested in, and then I'll show you what we mean by systematic literature reviews. Project sustainability. Project sustainability. Okay, so what we'll do now, <clears throat> uh, let me stop share and then I'll share again. And then, okay, this is a good point for me to illustrate to you what are known as uh, systematic literature reviews. The, the writing of literature reviews is also a, 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 a work that other researchers can do in terms of the work that they are doing. So you can publish work, uh, research that is based on uh, published literature reviews. So let's say if I say here, um, project, project, sustainability. So whatever word that you decide to use, it's fine, but make sure at the end of the topic or theme that you're using, you put the word sign plus, and then you say systematic literature review, and then you press enter. And then what it does then, it, it shows you articles that have been written, written, particularly focusing on issues related to project sustainability. And there's one article of that nature uh, that we can download. Uh, there are different ones. Uh, sometimes some people may not have databases like uh, Science Direct, but it's also um, uh, useful for you to uh, search for information that you may be able to utilize. And here is the article, uh, a, a, a systematic literature review on the topic of project sustainability. So what a systematic literature review is when people do the hard work 
that really you are supposed to do by searching for, by writing articles that summarize literature reviews. Now, obviously, you can't just base it on saying, I'm not going to do an actual literature review. I'm going to outsource and just find others who have done it. But it's really a flair that you could also use. So in this slide here, I'm actually referring to uh, systematic literature reviews as, 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 as part of work that you can do in guiding the, the, the search that you're doing. Any topic that you're doing, but please, 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 please make sure that you, uh, let me project it, make sure that you, um, you, you write the word systematic literature review at the end of the topic that you're covering. So, so uh, the, 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 the other aspects now are really to then say um, the R6, and I always like putting numbers to it, the R6 that we can utilize in writing effective literature reviews. And I want to leave those tricks to you. And then um, remember part and parcel of the work that you must do then is to then put this into practice and let's see how they will come about. Number one, you have no choice but just to do the literature review. So please, please realize that there is no way you're going to sub, uh, submit a, a body of work that is to be marked as part of a, a, an academic piece of work without you doing the thorough work of conducting a, 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 a literature review. So you have no choice, just do the literature review. It's a mindset thing. So get into gear. It can also be time consuming. It can also be uh, filled with its uh, challenges. It can also be filled with its um, uh, uh, positive moments of growth in terms of writing you, in, the, in terms of assisting you to be a, a, a better writer. So the literature review is therefore an important part of the research project. It's also one of the most painful activities for the student because it involves a lot of reading, it involves a lot of uh, summarizing, uh, synthesis, but plan for it, be systematic. Uh, I often say, uh, try and as part of your writing project to say you're going to write 700 words a day. It really helps you in terms of organizing your thought processes. It's an iterative process. We go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It should be continual. So you don't do it once and then you are happy and satisfied to say, yeah, my allotment of the literature review is done. It should be a work that is ongoing. It should be a work that is continual. It should be a work that is uh, guided also in terms of by the, uh, the, the range of techniques that uh, follow through uh, the, the, the work that we were talking about, searching for material um, and also um, uh, making sure that we also synthesize the material in a way that uh, allows us not to waste time, but to also be purposeful and intentional in terms of the work that we're going to work with. The reflection point I can leave you here is plan for it. Uh, remember uh, a bruise and hunt article that I, I sent to you first time, uh, failing to plan can actuate to planning to, to, to fail or, or, or vice versa. So the, the premise really is plan for it. The second point, you will need to have not only ICT skills, but also intuition. Uh, use the range of um, techniques that are there, the sixth sense. A number of platforms have emerged over the years. ResearchGate, ListServes, Google Scholar, Academia.edu. All of these are social media platforms. I often say to my students that if you are on Facebook and if you are on Twitter and Instagram, very good. I'm also on those platforms, but make sure that you are also on platforms that feed and speak to your, um, the other side of you, which is the, the scholar in you side and make sure that you are able to uh, interact and engage with uh, um, uh, those platforms because those are useful platforms in also, um, Achieve, improving the way you write. I, 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 I think I can be attributed to this quote here, but I could be wrong if somebody else has come across, has, has, has said the following. 
you are as strong as the quality of your source. So if your sources are going to be a Sunday, Sunday World, Sunday Mirror, Sunday, you know, the Sunday newspapers, the standard, and I mean, there's room for that. In fact, if an article or if a, if a proposal is to be uh, having 80% of sources to be newspaper articles, I, I, I actually question the, the relevance of those sources in terms of uh, making some of the arguments that we're talking about. So we must have the sixth sense as a useful outlet in expressing ourselves. I've spoken about literature reviews, systematic literature reviews. These are a good way to start, defined as um, a, 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 a form of documentary support that identifies, selects, and also critically appraises research to answer a formulated question. Uh, that's what a systematic literature review does. And um, um, the other part is uh, the reflection, tap onto what others have done, not just to copy or observe, but to contribute. And this is why systematic literature reviews are important. And the systematic literature reviews have a benefit. One of the benefits is that they're widely cited. So if I do a systematic literature review on strategic planning research that has been done in a Zimbabwean context, it's going to be widely cited because a lot of people use it as a frame of reference to, to the work that they are doing. <clears throat> Number four, normalize reading articles. Uh, at, at the level that we are at, please normalize reading articles, get into the habit of reading attentively, reading with questions, reading with relevance, visualizing, make the reading uh, work interesting and exciting for everyone. If you, if you make it boring and uh, difficult to capture, uh, it, it's also difficult for you as a person because you will not enjoy the activity. So normalize the, the, the activity of reading. Get excited when you are reading. Get excited to be untapping information and making sure that information comes out. But ask questions as you read. I mean, these are things that fundamentally we were taught uh, at a young age when you are reading, how to read. Read with question, read with meaning, read with relevance, visualize it, mind maps. And I, and I know for some, it could be our prof, you're now insulting our intelligence, but it really helps to, to actually get your ideas of what you want to do. Tap onto what others have done, not just copy, but for the sake of contribution. Consult also other credible sources. By other credible sources, I'm not talking about journal articles, I'm also talking about uh, things like um, uh, policy documents, uh, government documents, uh, uh, you know, financial state, not financial state, uh, year end reports of certain firms or sectors. You know, the credibility of those sources is not necessarily in that uh, they are not there are articles that may not be thoroughly peer reviewed but they may help you in getting a contextual argument of the area that you are working with and that becomes important because a lot of people uh, forsake those types of sources because they are not well understood and um, uh, given the, as much attention as others. Nothing is more dangerous than a researcher with one pair of glasses. The one pair of glasses that just chooses to see what you want to see. So widen the scope, uh, polish up your glasses so that your glasses are able to see uh, other literature. So as academic language can be daunting, normalize the ability to read because through the normalization of this reading process, you are able to understand different arguments and different angles from different uh, sources as a way of improving um, um, uh, the work that we are doing. Uh, as you read, be also a professor to your own academic writing improvement. Don't just read for the sake of reading. I mean, this is a beautiful picture I love so much. Um, in 2007, I completed my master's degree uh, around the usage of e-learning in the workplace. Uh, I wrote my first article uh, published in the South African Journal of Human Resources. The thesis is also available on uh, the NETD platform. But I, I cited a lot of work of 
someone by the name of Bandura, Alex Bandura, uh, who's a celebrated icon, Albert rather, who's a celebrated uh, icon in the in the area of um, uh, learning, social cognitive learning and social learning. And so um, a couple of years later, I understand Bandura got a medal of honor from um, Professor from, from, from Barack Obama. And uh, one of the things that's interesting is that Bandura's work is all about uh, how do we learn? How do we improve the ability to learn? Bandura argues of the importance of observing others, uh, role modeling, people imitating our behaviors, we can name children here, the attitudes and the emotional reactions that we have to others. So in his uh, theory, which is known as the social learning theory, Bandura considers how both the environment and the cognitive factors shape how we come about with the interface of human learning and human behavior. So the, 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 the other thing that you can, you can look at is this idea that learning can also be uh, important and critical uh, as it also builds up uh, your own reflexive practice, practice as a scholar. Be the best lesson point to yourself, the work that you read. I know students don't like reading their work when they, they send their work to their supervisors. And I often argue that the, the supervisor should not be doing the work of uh, language editing, grammar, and all of that. That should be something that uh, all of us uh, are engaged in uh, uh, before we read. And, and somebody told me a little point that before you even submit a chapter to someone, make sure you read it three, four times uh, as a way of just improving your own uh, reflection. And now the last point is really an interesting one. Uh, some of you may not remember this, but this is something that um, uh, uh, became very popular uh, over the years as a TV show that was showing um, uh, on, 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 on TV around um, a song, a song called uh, The Song That Doesn't End. And I've put the YouTube link there for those who want to, to listen to it. Unfortunately, somebody did something very interesting with that YouTube link. They then replicated the song so many times, about seven hours, eight hours of the same song over and over. But the song is called The Song That Doesn't End. Uh, the lyrics go, this is the song that doesn't end. Yes, it goes on and on, my friend. Some people started singing it, not knowing what it was and they will continue singing it forever, just because this is the song that doesn't end. And allow me to add to you, that's exactly what a literature review is about. It's an iterative process. It doesn't end. It goes on and on and on and on. Don't think that because you've done it at the start of your dissertation, you're sorted. You still need to keep on doing it and doing it and mastering it and being the point of perfection. So if some of you have got eight hours to spare, to be listening to the same song over and over and over again. Uh, you're welcome to, to, to download that. Uh, it's actually 10 hours. Uh, somebody just put it there uh, uh, to bring you 10 hours of the same song that never ends. And this should be a reminder to all of us that um, literature reviews are exactly that. They never end. We continuously do them over and over again. They help us make better, but they, 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 they just help us in also to improve and refine the ideas that we have. So thank you very much for listening through. I think I'm very, very early today. Um, uh, I've taken about a, a, an hour and a half, or an hour actually, So which is, which is quite good that we can open it up for, for discussion and uh, people can uh, converse and also um, ask questions. Remember, you, you will have to do your own literature review as part of the assessment that we'll talk about on the last day of class uh, for, 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 and, and part and parcel of producing the proposal. Um, the literature review is critical. And what I've done is I've also sent you some sample articles on different themes. Um, and, and I will be sending some more this coming week uh, based on the input that you gave me uh, last week. 
Prof, it's uh, it's it's Kenan Dube here. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you very much for uh, uh, the insights you have uh, dropped for our guidance in the research journey. My two questions, Prof. Um, uh, the first relates to always looking for in imperfections as you do the literature review. Mm -hmm. What you know, uh, others have called uh, problematizing uh, the literature. Uh, which you are reviewing. Uh, any insights and any leads to what can be done practically? That's number one. The second question, uh, Prof, is literature review, you say it's a continuous iterative uh, process. And um, when you are asked to prepare a concept not, you are required to do some literature review. Yes. When you are asked to do a proposal, you have to do some literature review. When you then do literature review as part of your thesis, then a comprehensive uh, review is done. Uh, just to educate uh, me on what is the difference in the depth one has to go into at the three different stages. I ask this because we have been asked by the authorities to prepare a concept note. Now we are going to be preparing a proposal leading to a comprehensive literature review. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Thank you for the, for the questions. I appreciate it. The, let me start with the latter question. Yes, consistently through the journey, you will need a, a, a literature review. I'll, I'll start with writing an article, a journal article, like stuff I do on a, on a daily, weekly basis. Uh, the maximum prescribed length sometimes of an article is between 5,000 to 7,000 words. That includes references. So you'll actually find if it's a 7,000 word article, my literature review would probably be 4,000 4, words. So a sizable number of the um, the word limit or the word count in that article will be uh, the literature review. So a concept note would not have a very thorough literature review because obviously it's a bit limited, and the, uh, it would. Uh, I think a proposal would have more depth in terms of the the literature that you're working with. But but there's a little trick. A literature review can be split into two sections. Uh, I think we covered this last time. The first section is the theoretical literature, which covers the um, the theories that govern or that, that uh, shape the area that you're looking at. What I did in the, um, in the proposal is I have in, on the proposal in the in the in the material I've sent you I've sent you um, uh, summaries of some of the work done on prominent <coughs> management theories that exist so you can have a look at that and see which ones shape your work but remembering also that theories do not necessarily have to come from one discipline on domain I'll give you an example if you want to try and understand the risk that people make to take part in corrupt activities. Uh, you can position this using a theory such as game theory. Game theory summarizes the idea of uh, behavior by saying, we take bigger risk for bigger game. If I know that I'm likely to return and get 500,000 US dollars in a certain behavior, be it unethical or whatever the case may be, or I am likely to get five US dollars in the same behavior with the same uh, 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 con consequence, no, same activity line, which is being corrupt or whatever. Uh, I'm likely to say, ah, for five dollars, I'm doing myself an injustice here. But for 500,000 US dollars uh, for the same behavior, I, I'm more likely to do it. So that theory is a theory that may not necessarily have been applied in its uh, popularity in um, management literature. Here's another one, um, a stakeholder theory. 
It can be used in matters of corporate governance. It can be used in matters in understanding community practices and communities uh, engagement on certain areas. So, 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 so what we need to understand is that literature review can consist of two important forms of uh, literature, the theoretical literature and the second one is the empirical literature. The empirical literature is based upon the philosophy of empiricism, which is this idea of evidence. On another day, uh, when I want to uh, play devil's advocate with the students, I can ask them questions around the existence of a deity such as God and say to them, uh, how do you know that God exists? And the typical answers after six, seven years of doing this exercise in my current class is that students will tell you, well, we know God exists because we can feel him. We, and someone in one year even asked, but why is the framing of God always framed in the he? Why can't God be a, a feminine? And that brings also other aspects and angles of interrogation that students may have in terms of questions they have. But empiricism is this idea that through the existence of evidence, we are able to know uh, why certain things exist the way they are. Through the existence of evidence, we're able to know why certain behaviors exist the way they behave. And, and, and because we can see the behavior and because we can uh, internalize and visualize it and, and, and actually notice it from afar off, then we're able to then say, aha, we know the existence of A, B, C, and D because of the following. And that becomes critical and that becomes important. And so that is then the, 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 the guidance I can give that the length is determined. Concept notes really summarize ideas of what you want to work with. Uh, proposals really go a bit in depth with this classification of uh, empirical and theoretical. And then the, 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 the document in itself, the dissertation that you are working on, will then have even a much broader and in-depth focus on this idea of um, the, 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 the literature review. And then that was the, the, the second question. Uh, you'll have to remind me, I'm, I'm a bit tired tonight. What, what was the first question? The idea of... Um, they call it problematizing. Problematizing, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, the, the, I would call it critical reading and critical thinking. I will give you an example. As you read, okay, uh, whether we like it or not, as I'm speaking to you right now, uh, my mind may be running up and down. Uh, or oh, tomorrow I have to drive for three hours to this meeting. Tomorrow I have to, and in, in my head, I, I am already ahead though I'm in the present right now with you. So the, the point I'm merely illustrating is that there is nothing wrong with that type of reading. In fact, it's the type of reading that when, when you read, uh, read critically, sometimes the, the, the level of critique that may exist um, is actually in uh, not necessarily being rude and abrasive about your critique of what others have done, but being open-minded. I'll give you an example. In, in South Africa, we some people will argue we are so obsessed here about race and race relation. Um, one can read work about uh, work behavior and understanding work psychology and notice that uh, historically there has been an omission of black sample groups in the theorizing about uh, uh, organizational behavior practices. And the reason behind that had to do with um, the thinking that most of the scales and psychometric instruments that were used to understand the work of uh, psych the, the, the uh, informed psychologists were adapted or adopted from an American context. And uh, by thinking those that used them in an African context, uh, for some reason, believed that we must mirror as much as possible the American male in our theorizing. So blacks, black males in the workplace were never considered a, a, a platform that could be given any form of understanding around issues related to um, uh, the theorizing in, in that particular time period. And so that's a type of critical reading that we are looking at, this uh, type of reading in the present, but also reading ahead to say, I can see a gap already here that uh, I can exploit uh, for the sake of positioning my study.
Thank you, Prof. I'm answered. Any other questions or comments? Hello, Prof. Yes. Earlier on, you touched on in the issue of newspapers as possible sources of literature. Mm -hmm. I've had quite a number of conflicting views on how far one can adopt these as credible sources. I just want your comment. What do you think? OK. Uh, let's, let's start by asking the question, what, what was on the front page of the Herald today in, in, in Zimbabwe? What was the leading story? Uh, let me just check. I think I have uh, something here. Um, I have the Chronicle with me. That's fine. Um, it's about the increase in COVID deaths, COVID related deaths in Blawai. Perfect. So, so, so let's say I then locate my work to say, I am starting to study uh, organizational responses to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, a case of Zimbabwean organizations. Now, what I am saying is that you do not necessarily have to rely on newspaper articles alone to launch the argument of that case. But there could be things that stand out about that particular report in the Chronicle today that you can use as an argument, maybe in the background section of your proposal, uh, to make your reader be aware that um, in Zimbabwe, particularly, um, you want to report, okay, so you write the article, Zimbabwe has witnessed an increase in the number of COVID-19 deaths, full stop. But Zimbabwe is, 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 is a big country which has different geographical uh, locations. So you could then say, uh, Chinyamurindi 2021 argues that COVID-19 uh, has had a devastating impact on the economy of Zimbabwe. Narrowing this further, the name of the journalist, let's say it was um, uh, uh, Moyo, uh, Moyo, uh, even further, Moyo 2021 uh, shows the increase of COVID-19 deaths, particularly in Bulawayo, as the Chronicle is, is based in that geographical region. So what you've done there is you are showing the flair that can come with the writing, but not necessarily entirely relying on a newspaper source as a as a as 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 as, as a lodge to the entire thesis or uh, dissertation, but as a useful um, uh, source that you can show uh, in the type of writing that you are making. Yes, I agree. You must not use journal uh, newspaper articles uh, as supreme authority for the or document of that nature but there are little uh, snippets here and there you can drop as part of the the, the, the writing that you're making and that, that comes also in in realizing that there is no substitute for quality the hard work must be done with peer-reviewed credible sources but also you can use these other little um credible sources as i put them in in bracket form Allow me to take my question a little further, Prof. Okay. I'm a bit worried uh, about this whole thing because one newspaper says the cases are rising. The next newspaper says the cases are not rising at all. And these are two reporters, both in Blawayo, and, and they claim to be writing about what they've witnessed. But I don't think they've seen the primary sources, they, 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 they've not obtained the primary sources of the information. Probably somebody is writing from a bar and he claims that the, the cases are rising for, of course, for a motive. Uh, this, this is my worry. So, so what you can do, what you can do then, and this is where the synthesizing comes in, 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 in place, instead of then because you've read, you can see that there's no agreement. So what you then can do is to then argue that uh, there appears to be no agreement 
as to the the cases of COVID-19, especially in Zimbabwe. And then the next reference would then be to put the two issues, because remember the point of argument is there is no agreement. So if newspaper source A is Moyo and the other one is Dube, and then you then argue that there appears to be no agreement as to or, or consensus as to the rising numbers of the COVID-19 pandemic in Zimbabwe, and then you acknowledge those. So, so the, the, the work then of reflexivity becomes the work that you do, that you are not quick to just accept one position. Remember I said um, you're as powerful as the sources that you, you, you cite, but number two, there's a danger in wearing one pair of glasses when it comes to such matters. And I guess your, your, this example is a good example of why we need to uh, be open to uh, a range of uh, thought processes that may exist about the same phenomena. But, but it, it, you can work it to your favor by arguing that there is no consensus and then you argue and you put those sources as sources of authority. Because what you're showing is that there is no consensus. Thank you, Prof. Okay, I don't know if there are any other comments and uh, questions, and then we can call it a night, and then um, we look ahead to the methodology section, uh, which is coming up next, uh, on I think on Wednesday. Good night, Prof. Good night, colleagues, and uh, yeah, I'm assuming no more questions, but thank you very much. I've sent the materials, remember, uh, everything is building up to that report that uh, you guys will have to um, uh, uh, work with. Thank you, Prof. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, thank you very much, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Thank you. Prof.